Is Chris Sale back? Because it certainly seems that way after he turned in another strong outing and helped lift the Red Sox to another win to secure the series against the Padres on Saturday. You are Locked On Red Sox, your daily Boston Red Sox podcast. Part of the Locked On Podcast Network, your team every day. Thank you for making Locked On Red Sox your first listen of every single day. I'm your host, Lauren Willand, and happy Sunday. If you are just waking up, you are probably happy with how the Red Sox played on Saturday. They did beat the Padres 4-2, to so they now have officially won the series going into their finale against San Diego on Sunday. It is a 4-10 first pitch, so a little earlier than the last few games, which if you're like me, probably is good for you because then you won't be struggling to stay awake. There was a time when I was younger when I could just stay up. I lived for these West Coast games, but if I'm not working for the game, if I'm not covering the game, I am knocked out. I am someone who's in bed very early, but the Red Sox are making it easy to watch fun baseball because that's that's what they've been doing. The Red Sox now have won four straight games. They won over the Padres 4-2 to two at Petco Park. So now they've won the series, which is a big boost going into Sunday's game, a good way to kick off this road trip. Even if they do lose Sunday, you still go into the series against the Angels on a high note because now you've won the series, but you don't definitely do not want to throw away Sunday's game. You want to go for the sweep. You don't want to give the Padres any momentum. And Chris Sale was a huge, huge part of Saturday's win. He put together another strong, solid outing, and this came after his eight-inning masterclass that Ended up getting erased due to Kenley Jansen's blown save. But Sale went seven innings. He gave up three hits, two earned runs. He only walked one, and he struck out eight. Now, over his past four starts, he now has a 2.30 ERA. That's over 27 and a third innings pitched. So just really love what I'm seeing from Sale lately. He also retired the side in order in the first, third, fourth, and seventh innings. So that was really, really good to see as well. His really only two blemishes on the night were two solo home runs by Juan Soto and Fernando Tatis Jr. And we talked about Tatis in Saturday's episode that he's always just seems like he's somebody who's always going to provide a spark to this lineup, even when they're struggling. And that's what he did. But as much as we want to talk about Chris Sale and how strong he's been the last few games, and especially in Saturday's game, he really credited Kike Hernandez after he made what he called two big time plays at shortstop to help keep the Padres off that base path. In the third inning, Hernandez fired off a one hopper to Tristan Casas. And then in the seventh sales final inning, he had a strong play made. He made it to his right. And we've given a lot of grief to Hernandez about playing short, obviously just has not looked very comfortable there. But Chris Sale after the game said, those are two big plays that just kind of shut it down. Bad throw or if it gets through or whatever, that obviously extends the inning, and I probably don't finish the seventh inning without those two plays being made. So those are obviously big time. So it's really nice to see Hernandez get his praise at a position that he's very much struggled at. And if you don't see those two plays, if he doesn't make those two plays, if he continues to make errors, this game could have had a different outcome. But it was really nice to see him make those plays, A, and B, hear Chris Sale, who was kind of the star of the show, kind of pass the torch to Hernandez and be like, listen, I'm not here without these guys. And he does that a lot after his start. You know, he's always like, this isn't me. It's about the team. And he always makes sure that who makes those plays gets that recognition. And I think Hernandez has looked a lot more confident lately at shortstop. He did miss a few games recently. He did have the hamstring tightness, but maybe he used that time to kind of like regroup and kind of just maybe get himself in a better mental state to play that position. He's not a natural shortstop. He was a second baseman. And then we know what he did in center field. And I was hopeful that he would be able to just go to short just because of his athletic ability and the way he went from second to center field. Yeah, shortstop is not the same as center field, but he made it look so easy where I was like, oh, this is going to be a piece of cake for Hernandez. But it wasn't, and he, it has not been. But he definitely looks more confident. And he was making errors left and right, it seems. But over the past 13 games, he only has one error. And that dates back to May 2nd. And he said after the game, he said, it's no secret that I was struggling. For me, struggling defensively is something that I've never really gone through. So things were kind of snowballing. I didn't know how to go about it. It was just something new to me. I stepped back and tried to play in slow-mo almost. Not trying to rush anything. Just play and be myself. 
and have fun. And I think that's kind of what it all comes down to. And I talked about this recently, how maybe that, you know, making those errors and being in a new position and you're not living up to those expectations probably got to his head and was just making it worse for him when every time the ball was hit toward him, he was probably thinking, crap, I got to make this play. Oh my God, if I don't make this play, oh my God, I bubble the ball. Great. How can I not get this under control? How do I get this under control? And it probably, and he said it, he snowballed. And that's what happens in the mental side of the game when you're not playing your best. It gets to you and it clearly got to Hernandez. And now he's starting to kind of right those wrongs. I don't think he's the answer at shortstop. I mean, Trevor Story can't come back fast enough, it seems, but we don't know how that is going to be once he does return, if he's going to be you know, 100% to play that position. But if Hernandez can at least keep this kind of play up, all right, this is what has been needed since he took over that position at the beginning of the season. But turning back to the pitching, Chris Martin took over for Chris Sale in the eighth inning through a perfect inning, which set up Kenley Jansen for the save. Now, this was Jansen's first appearance since May 13th when he blew the second of a back-to-back blown saves, and it looked a little dicey for a moment. I was like, oh no, is he going to blow a third save right now? Is he going to do this again? He did walk two batters, and I was like, oh god, the Padres are going to walk this off, aren't they? But Rafael Devers made the final out of the game. Jansen earned his 10th win of the season, so crisis avoided, win secured, and the pitching looks really good right now. I think it's looked good throughout the series. We've talked a lot about the pitching on the series. Corey Kluber is going tonight for the finale for the Red Sox. I'd love to see him keep these good times rolling with a strong start of his own. He's going up against old friend Michael Waka, and Michael Waka is coming off an almost no-hitter. He's flirting with the no-hitter, took it into the eighth inning in his last start. He's flirted with a lot of no-hitters throughout his career. I don't want him to do it again on Sunday night. But in our second segment, we will talk about the offense and how Emmanuel Valdez is looking like a big win for High and Bloom. But before I do that, I'm just going to tell you about So Rare. So Rare is a revolutionary fantasy baseball game and marketplace transforming fans into owners with officially licensed digital cards featuring players from every single MLB team. A lot of us play it in the Locked On MLB group chat. Some better than others, but this is unlike any other fantasy baseball platform. So Rare managers truly own their fantasy experience you collect you buy you sell and you compete with your player cards against global opponents to win epic rewards win or lose you still own your cards and it costs nothing to play so big win win there plus the more you win the more you advance something i wouldn't know too much about collecting increasingly powerful cards and accessing next level competitions and rewards now so rare also has partnered with juan soto and julio rodriguez to serve as their brand ambassadors and they will engage with the so rare community across different mlb events this season so if you want to get in on this head to so rare.com slash locked on that's spelled s-o-r-a-r-e dot com to draft your team of free player cards set your lineup and start competing today to win epic rewards again that's so rare.com slash locked on to start playing today So as good as the pitching was on Saturday, the offense came through. It was only four runs, so this wasn't, you know, a big like 12-1 win, 8-2 win or anything like that. But four runs, thankfully, was enough for the Red Sox to get the job done. And Emmanuel Valdez played a big role in that. He got the Red Sox on the board with his third home run of the season. And this was a three-run bomb off Joe Musgrove. He finished the night two for four with three RBI and a run scored. So Look at those runs. He scored one run, drove in the other three, just doing a lot for the Red Sox right now. And friend of the pod and my soon-to-be co-worker, Chris Cotillo, tweeted that the Red Sox won the Christian Vasquez trade that they didn't need to make. And I thought that kind of made me laugh and it kind of got me to thinking that I think he's absolutely right. No, that trade didn't need to happen, especially how the remainder of last year's trade deadline went when it looked like they were just going to blow it up and go in this direction of almost a rebuild but then they didn't trade J.D. Martinez. They didn't trade Nate Valdi. They didn't make any other trades that didn't, they didn't. The trades that they made just didn't make a whole lot of sense at this time. And I was critical of the Christian Vasquez trade because there was no direction of this team. And at the time of the deadline, yes, it didn't look like the Red Sox were going to make a run at the postseason. But there was still a glimmer of hope. And it was just like, why are you trading away your catcher and not really having a solid backup plan? Did get Reese McGuire. You still had Kevin Ploiecki at that time and then Connor Wong. But no, the trade didn't essentially need to happen. But it looks like it's working in Boston's favor. And it looks like this could be a big win for High and Bloom. And you look at, if you compare the stats of Vasquez and Valdez, and 
one has not played as many games as the other. Christian Vasquez has 102 at-bats. In those at-bats, he has 13 runs, 24 hits, no home runs, 10 RBI, no stolen bases, and a 235 average. I'm not looking too much at the stolen bases. He was not known for stealing bases or anything like that. And when you look at Emmanuel Valdez's stats, he has 58 at-bats, so almost cutting Vasquez's at-bats in half. And over that span, Valdez has six runs, 17 hits, three home runs, 10 RBI, three stolen bases, and a 293 average. So, I mean, yeah, I think I'm going to take Valdez over Vasquez just looking at those stats alone, but we know stats don't tell the entire story. Catching hasn't been a major issue for the Red Sox. Reese McGuire did struggle at the beginning of the season throwing batters out. Then you look at Connor Wong, who had the second highest pop time in MLB among catchers. So, and Connor Wong's getting a lot of praise of late, and he got some praise from James Paxton for being able to keep him in the game and keep the Padres off balance on a night where he struggled with command. So even though Vasquez was a veteran on this team, a player that people loved, a player that fans loved, I think now you look back at it and and it's looking really good for the Red Sox, especially if he keeps this up. And he was called up from Worcester this year after Yu Chang went on the IL. Christian Arroyo also went on the IL. There was just kind of no one to fill in there at that second base position. I mean, you could move Story over, but then it still leaves a bigger void at shortstop. So really good on Valdez to just kind of own the moment and take advantage of the time that he's in the lineup because the Red Sox are getting healthier. And while Valdez is getting the job done at second base and at the plate, Alex Cora does have some tough decisions to make regarding his roster because Christian Arroyo is slated to begin a rehab assignment Tuesday. Alex Cora confirmed that that's what's most likely going to happen. Arroyo is dealing with a hamstring issue, his yearly hamstring injury, but there's really no need to rush him back. And we've been kind of hard on Arroyo this year, just saying that he's not built to be an everyday player. And that's because he's never really been an everyday player. And now he's hurt and somebody has stepped up in his absence. And I don't know where Arroyo belongs. I mean, I think he should have him on the roster, but you don't want him taking up a spot where somebody like somebody that you need on that roster. So Other decisions are also looming around the starting rotation because Garrett Whitlock will join the Red Sox after his Wu Sox start today. Alex Cora also confirmed that on Saturday. Garrett Whitlock will be activated for the series against the Diamondbacks, which begins May 26th. So he will not pitch against the Angels, which obviously if he's pitching Sunday, no, he's not going to pitch a game or two later. So I'm excited to see what Garrett Whitlock will be able to do because Cora mentioned that Whitlock's really been working on his changeup and is kind of changed his changeup, and that's the pitch that's been giving him some trouble. So I'm excited to see those mechanics. I'm excited to see what he does for the Woo Sox on Sunday, and I'm excited to see how his role evolves with the Red Sox. Will he be a starter? Will he end up going back to the bullpen? But even if Garrett Whitlock stays in the rotation, there's still moves to be made because maybe we'll see a six-man rotation, like the week of the six-man rotation like we did when Paxton came back. Maybe we'll see another starter move to the bullpen. Maybe Sunday's start for Kluber holds a lot of weight to it. So we don't know, but we will see. We'll get those answers probably before this week comes to a close, before Garrett Whitlock is officially activated. Be very interested to see how Cora handles it and what he does going forward. I mean, especially with the team getting healthier, it makes you wonder who's the odd man out, who's going to get sent back to Worcester, somebody going to get DFA'd, what decisions are next. Is Christian Arroyo on the hot seat because – Everything looks to be okay right now. And Christian Arroyo, no offense to Christian Arroyo, but he's not somebody who makes or breaks your team. And I thought Adam Duvall might be that kind of person. I was like, oh God, the Red Sox are going to really struggle without him because of how hot he started the season before breaking his wrist. But they have gotten by without him. And speaking of Adam Duvall, we have a few more injury updates, including his, and we'll address those in the third segment of the Locked On Red Sox podcast after I tell you about bird dogs. Bird dogs are all about fit, comfort, and versatility, and that's exactly what they provide. They say look good, feel good, and I certainly do both when I'm wearing bird dogs. You can wear them to the golf course, and then if you need to go meet some friends after, you don't even have to change. Unless it was a very intense game of golf and want to just change it to another pair of bird dogs, you certainly can, but you can wear these on the golf course night out with friends, night in with friends. You can wear them to work. They have pairs of pants and pants of shorts for every single occasion. Their fabric is really stretchy, so it will fit you like a glove. They're just amazing. You have to go find these for yourself. And if you don't believe me, the part of my take host, they famously never wear pants, but you do know what they wear is bird dogs and they swear by them. They truly love them. 
So head on over to birddogs.com slash locked on MLB to start your order. And when you enter the promo code locked on MLB, they'll throw in a free custom bird dogs Yeti style tumbler. I love mine. It goes with me everywhere. So head on over to birddogs.com slash locked on MLB to start your order today and get that free tumbler. So the Red Sox are winning. They have a four-game win streak, and they're getting healthier. There's some good news on the injury front. Adam Duvall hit off a tee on Friday and then hit soft toss the following day on Saturday. And then he told Mass Live that his target date to return is June 9th. So that's very, very good news. Duvall is on the 60-day IL after he broke his wrist. He didn't need surgery, so that thankfully did not extend his recovery time. If he needed surgery was a possibility he was going to miss the entire year. So the good news though is that he's hitting and he says he feels good. So that is that's that's really exciting. But June 9th is approaching and that outfield looks pretty good. So it will be really interesting to see how Cora handles the lineup, who gets sent to Worcester, DFA's decisions, decisions. Because you look at Jaron Duran, you look at Ryan Maltapia, those two could be the people that you're like, okay, maybe they're on the hot seat, but they're both playing fine. And especially Duran, I think that Duran has really taken advantage of his time since his last call up to the Red Sox from Worcester. So I'm, I think that's the, the, the move I'm looking for the most. And we still have a few weeks to go before we would get that decision. But you're looking at this outfield and you're looking at other positions as well. But the outfield too, there is a log jam there. And it's only going to get more crowded as this team gets healthier. But I think you put Adam Duvall back in that lineup and I'm really excited to see hopefully he can pick up right where he left off and then Yu Chang also began taking swings so that's a positive step in his recovery. He had surgery on a broken bone in his wrist. Cora said he's feeling good but there's no word on when he'll start a rehab assignment but I think that's to be expected. He wasn't expected back certainly this month at all and Chang had a two-week stretch where he was pretty much the primary shortstop for the Red Sox. He looked good. He was making plays there. So it was really unfortunate timing for his injury. But good news is, is that you know he's back taking those swings. He's getting healthier. And then there's Adalberto Mondesi. And Cora said that a rehab assignment hasn't even been discussed for him yet. So I wouldn't be surprised if we don't see him at all this year. But it's not the end of the world. I think that the Red Sox obviously are getting by without him. He hasn't played for the Red Sox this season. And I think that, I mean, I don't want to see somebody waste the money on a player that doesn't play like James Paxton last year, but it ended up working out. Maybe that's what's going to happen with Mondesi, but I'm not stressing over the fact that a rehab assignment hasn't even been discussed yet. We have no idea what he's going to bring to this team. And we knew that when he was signed, we knew that there was a possibility he might not be ready for opening day. And we knew that there could have been a slim possibility he might not play all season. And I know it's only May, but I think that the longer this goes... And the more, if the Red Sox continue to win, do they really need them? Eh, I don't know. Thank you for making Locked On Red Sox your first listen of every single day. Every day is tomorrow is my final episode of the Locked On Red Sox podcast. I can't believe it's here. I can't believe that my time with you is coming to an end. But we will discuss Sunday's game. Hopefully we are talking about a sweep so we can end our time together on a high note. But please rate, review, and subscribe to the Locked On Red Sox podcast right here on YouTube, Apple, Spotify, wherever you get your podcasts is where you can find us. Also, we are on Twitter at LO underscore Red Sox. And then me, la 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 Lauren, three laws, Lauren with four R's. Don't forget the other shows across the Locked On Network, Locked On Padres, poor Javier. I hope, I hope he's doing okay. Locked On Angels, Locked On Diamondbacks. Everyone does such a great job bringing you baseball content Monday through Friday. We'll be back tomorrow for the final time. You and me, let's make it count. We'll see you tomorrow. We'll end this show how we always do. Keep the faith and let's go Red Sox.